Alright guys, no name here. Before the video, with kind of a disappointing announcement, this podcast is actually incomplete because Anchor lost the lost lost the last part of my audio file that me and uh, Joe, the license plate guy, recorded together, which contains stuff about us talking about Landon Collins, Odell, Saquon, and Daniel Jones. Probably my favorite part of the podcast. Because we talked we talk about more recent stuff and the future of the Giants. But at this point, I really do have to move on from this app, man. You know, it's nice for recording remote podcasts with guests. But uh, I've been having way too many problems with it. And I'm definitely going to move on to another method. Right now, my backup, which I'm going to start using from now on, is um basically Skype. And then Skype call recorder. That's what I'm going to try and use. But really sad that this last part is basically lost. Like, as of right now, on Anchor. It's like labeled as still processing, but it's been four hours since then, and it doesn't take that long to process like a 15, 20 minute, I think the last part was around 20 minute audio file. If it finishes processing, and by some miracle it appears there within the next few days, I'm definitely going to take it, you know, download it, and then put it in and re-upload this as a full episode, but as of right now, I'm like really sorry that I have to give you guys some incomplete but I didn't want to, like, give you nothing, you know? So, hope you enjoy what's there. Hello, LPG Joe. How are you doing, man? What's going on, my man? Thanks so much for having me, man. Thank you for coming on. I don't think you realize you were probably the Giants fan, man. So, thank you for coming on. I'm a relatively small channel, so it means a lot. Nah, you know what? No problem, especially during this hard time. You know, everybody's... uh Everybody's going a little stir crazy. So doing stuff like this is uh, is not only my pleasure, but it's it's probably needed. I I completely agree with you there, man. Like people are bored out of their minds. There's absolutely nothing to do, and I've been like sort of trying to get some collabs going with you know fans, other content creators, and whatnot, just because there's nothing to talk about. And I know, you know, at least with really really big Giants fans that would usually be doing something with the off season right now. It's dry, so they need it. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, look, you 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 keep doing what you're doing and, and reaching out to fans. And, and to be honest with you, you, you could reach out to players as well because they're just as, as, as bored. And, you know, I don't mean you and I are not saying bored like, like, you know, we shouldn't be happy that we have a home and a this and a that. I, I don't want to, you know, downplay that. But yes, being bored and safe is OK. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree with you there. Not to downplay the situation as a whole. I agree exactly. with you there. Exactly. But I think people that are listening, if they can't cash that, I don't know if they, uh, I don't know if they should be on the internet if they couldn't <laughs> catch the content. That's a that's a very valid point there, man. I don't know if you were watching the um the replay of Super Bowl Forty Two. I didn't even realize it, but I saw yeah, you in the crazy. crowd. I'm like, yeah. what in the? World? How long? <laughs> I'm like, how long has this guy been going to games? Yeah, that's actually uh, that right there. And how can I afford it are the two major questions I get all the time. Uh, well, I guess the second one doesn't really pop into mind because there's, there's fans of like all different like economic backgrounds, especially exactly. with the Giants. So I'm like, that doesn't pop into mind. What pops into mind is how goddamn long. For me, time is more more of the thing more than money. It's like, where's the time? Yeah, no no question. I mean, I'm sure you're going to ask me that, so we'll get into that. YouTube, it's your boy, no name. You guys know me as Kush now. I think I'm going to start using that, actually. But I'm back at it with another Giants collab video for you guys. I know some of you might be bored, as me and my guests were talking about beforehand. Welcome aboard to probably a guy a lot of you know is the Giants fan, the license plate guy. What's up, Kush? Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. No problem, man. No problem. Thank you for coming on. Uh, and like, first things first, I guess for those of you that might not know you, license play guy, who are you exactly? <laughs> I'm, I'm real. I can tell you that. Uh, so <laughs> license play guy, license play guy actually has a name. It's Joe. But uh, I don't mind being called LPG or license play guy. I mean, uh, I've been I've been used to it for so many years now. It just comes secondhand. Um, uh I'm actually, like you said, just a big, just a big Giants fan, like everybody else out there. I hate when there, you know, there are other fans out there that think they're better than another fan. I've never thought that. 
Um, uh, maybe I'm in the public eye a little bit more. Maybe I have access a little more than some people. But, uh, you know, I've, I've earned that right after, after, you know, all these years of being a fan. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a physical education teacher. I'm an athletic director in New York. Uh, my pseudo uh, celebrity license plate guy is a is a totally separate life from my my real job. So, which is kind of funny. People have no idea that I actually do have a job, but <laughs> you, you, you got to afford to go to this go to these games. So, yeah, I need a job like everybody else. Exactly. So, He's yeah, just a regular yeah. guy, guy. Yeah, just a regular guy, man. I've been listen. I've been doing this thing a long time, uh, just like you guys. You know back in high school, junior high school, elementary school. I remember my dad, my grandfather. I remember everybody taking us to games. You know, as a Giant fan, you're bred into the family. So if if you're old enough to walk, shoot, before that, your butt's going to a game no matter what. You sit uh-huh. out in the cold no matter what. So, you know, I've been doing it a very long time. I, I don't think I missed a home game in like 40 years. But, you know, home and away, this, this would be my 20th year coming up this year. My God. 20, 20 years of just going to straight Giants game home and away? Every game, no matter what, home and away. This is me. Did my, I'm done with 19. This will be my 20th this year. That is absolutely amazing, man. That's First of all, we established he's a regular guy, but I, I just want to say I do like to appreciate the fans that go above and beyond, and I want to say, you know, I want to kind of give that appreciation to you. 20 years is a lot of time, guys. Like, that's dedication. He definitely withstood some terrible New York Giants years. And yeah. He was definitely in there for the great ones, too. So that's that's what you call dedication right there. 20 years is very yeah, it's long. Funny, it's, funny, it's funny you say that because, you know, what would I do if I was going, like, for 50 – which I'm not. What if I was mm-hmm. doing for, like, 50 years, though, and you got to experience that one Super Bowl? You know, it would be worth it. I got to be honest with you. Like, you take my 20 years right now. Forget about the 40 at home. Take the 20. And I've yeah. been to, you know, I've been to five Super Bowls. I only talk about four. You know, we don't talk about 35, but but I would give up practically anything to be in that building for Super Bowl 42, which is, you know, the greatest the greatest game to me ever just because of the magnitude. The, you're talking about the greatest Super Bowl uh, uh, versus the eighteen and zero Patriots, you're talking about being extreme underdogs. Road it is the road. it is not only the greatest Super Bowl ever. I agree, which is the greatest game ever. It's just the context of everything entering that game. Yeah, hey, look, look. Arguably, you know, I'll go to war with anybody. You know, talking about Giants football and being the best games. You know, even if it wasn't the best game, it had the best play in the history of the game of football. And, I, and it, that's not argue. You can't argue it. I don't care who you are. I don't care what catch you think is better. I don't care what throw you think is better. I'm talking about the escape and the throw to the catch. There's no better play on the biggest stage ever. So, mm-hmm. so getting getting back to that, yeah, you know, I've 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 sat through some really terrible years, and the last couple, holy cow, man, it's you know, it's struggling. You know, you go, would you, you say go, the go, last go. couple? I don't mean to interrupt you, but would you say the last couple, or would you say basically the last nine years? It's 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 been a it's been a long time. You're right. It's it's been a long time, but you know, it gets to you too, man. You could, you know, let's say the third game of the year, the fourth game of the year, and you're one and three, one and four, and you're going on the road in Cleveland or wherever, mm-hmm. and you're like, what am I doing, like? I just spent X amount of dollars on a ticket and you know where I sit. I only sit front row behind the Giants bench. So that ticket is buku bucks. Exactly. You know? So I'm sitting there with a with a one in four, one in five team. I paid, you know, a lot of money for this ticket. I'm looking online, I see the same ticket for twenty dollars. And I, you know, and mm-hmm. I had paid I had paid God knows how much, you know, two, three months before that. I got to get a car. I got a food. I got to get a hotel. I got to get my transportation. I got to get that plane. I got to get the Uber to and from the airports. Like, like it's tough. It's tough. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that, right. I'm glad you brought that up. It would be a really interesting topic to start off of. What was 
just because, you know, we're kind of in a rebuilding stage right now. What was probably your worst experience at a Giants game, whether it was the game itself was terrible or the team at the time was bad? Well, that's a really good question. Uh, because I don't, I don't normally, we don't normally go straight into the negative. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we go into the positive, but you know, unfortunately, we've had a lot of negatives. So you know, I don't mind talking about it. God, I've been. Uh, you want to talk about on the road or just in general? You know, let me get on the road first because I'd be surprised. I'll be honest with you. I'd be surprised if it's not like an NFC East rival road game that no, might have been your worst. It, it, but no, I, I don't know. No, 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 no. You, you're right. I mean. I mean, we could go straight to Philadelphia with the what with the 60, 61 yard or whatever it was that, you know, I we haven't. All right, let's go with the Philly game. There's a hundred different games I could tell you that's been disgusting in the last X amount of years. But let's just take that game. For example, I'm in Philly, which I hate. Mm -hmm. OK, I I can't stand that place. I get a lot of crap when I get to Philly. Go figure whether it I can't be I can't stand Philly fans. I'll just put that out there. Yeah, There's well, some the of them. Thing with, the thing with Philly fans is, and 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 I don't like them either. However, they is they they're as real as they come, man. They're as real as they come, and I like that about a fandom. I'm not saying they have any class. I'm not saying any of that. I don't like any of them, but they are real. So the thing with Philly fans is, if you're an opposing team coming in, and you and and Philly loses, you're in trouble. If you're an opposing fan and you come in and Philly wins, you're still in trouble. <laughs> so that's that's the tough part about going to Philly. It really is. But but getting back to your question, let's say, you know, let's say I'm in Philadelphia. Uh, we're, we're 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 finally winning, and we was that, well, that was 2017, right? Yeah, and we ha we haven't won a game, and I can't tell you how long in there. I can't tell. How about just verse them? So I'm thinking, um, you know what? I don't, what the, what the Eagles do to the Giants? It's what the Giants do to the Redskins. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. So, so, so I'm there and, you know, I don't, I don't really talk a lot of smack because I sit front row. So if I don't want to turn around and answer you good or bad, I don't have to say nothing to you. And I love it. You know, there are people mm -hmm. ripping me all game. I don't have to say no, I don't have, ever have to turn around. That's the greatest part about sitting front row. But but I'm looking like I've been here before. I've seen how a field goal, I've seen how Giants go up, you know, with a minute, two minutes left in the game, plenty of time left for the opposing team. Sure enough, here come the Eagles setting up for the field goal. And I'm like, there's no way this is going to happen. There's no way this is going to happen. And boom, they kick a 61 yarder and we lose the game. So And, and to, to make it even more crazy, Jake Elliott at that point, I think what, that was his first year starting as a kicker or something? Like, yeah, dude's never... Yeah, yeah, and to for them to even march him out there to kick that, I was like, no way, get out of here with this nonsense. Before they even made the kick, when they were marching him out, in my mind, I'm like, oh, Philly's really being disrespectful today. They think they're going to make this, and, and they made it. Yeah, and they made it, and it's just, that just goes to show you what was going on with the Giants, you know, because nothing they could do, nothing they could do was right, you know, and, and, and you know, I mean, look, we could go back and talk about McAdoo and we could talk about Shermer and we, you know, which I'm sure we will in this time. But uh, but but I'll, I'll chalk that game up as to to one of the ones that stabbed me in the back. Mm -hmm. I will say one thing, uh, Joe, can you step up a little bit closer to your mic or something? In the last two minutes or so, your voice got a little distance. I'm not sure why. Yeah, no doubt. I actually sat, sat back in the chair because I was getting pissed about the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, to your point, right at that point, and you could argue even up until last year, maybe nothing was going right for the Giants. Like for a team to have that much confidence to believe they're going to have a success of making that field goal against your team shows you the kind of place that we were in just three years ago, just three years ago. And that was coming off of the 2016 playoff season. Which yeah, I a, was, I think was, that was a gift uh, season. That was a gift. It was definitely an overachieving season, without a doubt. Yeah, but we were still just the previous year in the playoffs, and Philly had the confidence to do that. It is crazy. I think I think Philly, I think Philly. If Philly was zero 
0-15 facing the Giants, they have that confidence because it's just it's an East game, it's an East rivalry game, and and they have our number. So it's, it sucks all the way around. They do that, which is why I'd say Philly wouldn't be 0 15. They'd probably be 1 and 14 because they've had a win against the Giants. <laughs> yeah, good point, man. Good point. Like, I cannot, like, on a serious note, I cannot remember the last time Giants went into Lincoln Financial Field and came out with a win. Maybe I'm overlooking some small win over the past couple of years, but for the life of me, I can't pull it out of my brain right now. Yeah, I, I, it, uh, truth, truth be told, I don't really care because we're talking about if we and I can't sit here and I can remember. But we're sitting here talking about one, two victories in, in X amount of years. I don't even want to talk about those two. I agree. With you. you know what? That's a good point, too. Which brings me to the next question, because you said you, you could remember it, right? And this this actually looking back on it, this should have been the first question. But hey, man, it's a fun role with the punches podcast. I wanted to ask, how did license plate guy come to be? Where, where did that even come from? So, uh, uh Funny, funny story, I guess. Um, so I'm, you know, I've been going to games for years. I'm turning 16 years old. And uh, my mom and dad, uh, I think of my, I think it was my, my mom. I was like, yo, I, I need to go to motor vehicles when I get my license. I'm about to get, I'm about to get some customized plates. I need to get these giant <laughs> plates. And uh, I was thinking about it when I was 10. Like, I can't wait to drive. I can't wait to drive. We get custom plates. And, and let me tell you something. You're just in college right now. But, like, that was a lot harder back then, man. You had to go to motor vehicles. You had to have a, a couple of, of, of ideas. You know, they had to look it up online. And, and they might not even get back to you the same day. It wasn't like... Mm. It wasn't like you could just go online, bop, 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 and get these plates. Nah, it was hard. Yeah, like, now I think it's, like, an easy application. Nah, it's, it was hard. So... I think when I turned 16, my mom took me to motor vehicles and I waited online forever. Some things don't change. And, and I got up to the counter, I had my paperwork all filled out and, and I, and and the lady got back to me and she was like, nah, that's, that's the Giants is taken. And I remember that I was, I was devastated, y'all. I'm telling you, I was, I was so upset. I really was. So did you get around it or like what happened? No, like I was crying, like upset, like babyish. Oh, Jesus. And I I remember like it was my mom's idea. She was like, don't worry about giants. Why don't you just get rid of the eye and put a one in there? And I was like, oh, shoot, mom, Dukes. And (laughs) and uh, and sure enough, uh, G1 Ants was available and I still have it on my car to this day. So. You know, I applied for it. I got it. And, you know, I I put it on my car and I forgot. I forgot how long, but but the season was rolling around. You know, my birthday's in June. So September mm-hmm. comes and my dad's like, you know, you should you should take that plate off and wear it around your neck to a game. And I'm like, don't be that's corny. I'm not I'm not wearing my license plate to a game. And my dad is like, what are you, you know, you scared? I'm like, no, I'm not scared. I just think it's corny. And uh, and he dared me. And, you know, you don't dare a 16-year-old kid to do nothing. So uh, exactly. So I took it off my car. I took a, a shoelace and I put it around my neck. And, you know, people are like, oh, that's funny, I, you know, whatever. And, and the Giants won. And if you know anything about Giants football back in the day, it still is to this day, like, superstition is real so Mm -hmm. a lot of people in the section were like yo you better wear that again next week so it just became a funny thing i started wearing my license plate around my neck and uh and that was it i was never a license plate guy until much 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 later but but i certainly was the guy to wear the license plate guy license plates around the neck so that's yeah that's how it you know that's how license plate guy at least was was born but it wasn't until Super Bowl Forty Two when I was on the DVD that, and 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 the birth of social media did license plate guy take on a whole new meaning. Mm. Well, I guess we gotta thank your parents, not only for making this ugly mug over here, yeah. but also correcting him on getting the license plate and then daring him. He's right. Don't don't dare a teenager, especially a passionate fan, to do anything. And on that superstition thing, I don't. Uh, I have one crazy superstition. Right? It's like. Whenever the Giants score, 
I got to do some squats. And it's like the most <laughs> random thing ever. But one time when I was watching a game, I think it was like, it, w- it was the Saints game in 2015, that shootout between Eli and Breeze, right? Oh. I just started randomly, I just started doing random stuff because I wanted us to win so bad. And one time we scored, I was like, you know what, let me just do like seven squats or something, seven for the touchdown, right? And then they score again, I do it again. I'm like, yo, I'm going to continue doing this. And to this day, I still do it. Dude, it's it's crazy. Like it doesn't work all the time, but I I hear you on the superstition there's, there's part. There's no doubt that there are fans out there that got a lot of crazier stuff that you just said when when their team scores or they got a superstition. But I I got to tell you a real funny story. I don't think I've ever told this story on a podcast. So so here's a here's the first story ever. That game that mm-hmm. game you just mentioned was another heartbreaker. Okay, because that was about about a biggest shootout as you could possibly get. Manning, Breeze, Breeze, Manning, 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 Breeze, Breeze, Breeze. It was, it was an incredible game, and I remember I, I had to catch a flight. And that's another thing. Like I don't miss a lot of work, so when the game ends, I get to the airport and I'm back with like a red eye. I just got to get to work the next day. I don't take a lot of time off. Like I'm dedicated to my job and the kids. So, mm-hmm. so. I said, I turn around to my buddy and I'm like, yo, if this game goes into OT, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I got to go. And I don't ever miss a play. And he's mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, of course it does. And the game ends. When I tell you, man, I, I ran out that stadium and we get into my buddy's car and he has a, he drives, he drives to a lot of games and yes, he drove to New Orleans. So. So we get mm-hmm. in his avalanche and I turn on ways and it's, it's taken me through back roads and everything. And I, I swear, I don't really, I shouldn't be saying this, but I was doing like a hundred and oh my God. driving me back. To yeah, it's okay. Nobody on here is going to, we won't pretend we didn't he hear that. He's driving me back to the, to the airport. Actually, I'm driving, I'm driving his truck and we're going through side streets and I'm blistering. And all of a sudden, I see this car coming. I'm coming. This car's coming from the left. I was like, this is, oh, no. Oh, no. I slam on the brakes. Boom. I mean, I hit this car in the back uh, driver's door. And I just see him doing like three 360s. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, it that's was terrible. bad. It was bad. So, so I run out just to make sure this guy's okay. And he opens up the pass, the uh, driver's side door. And I could see he's like, I'm not saying he's pretending like he's hurt because I didn't hit his door. But Mm -hmm. he's like sitting there talking with his wife, who's in the passenger seat, like in Spanish. And I'm like, oh, Mm -hmm. shoot. Like, I hope they're not, you know. So I said to them, I'm like, oh, Espanol? Oh, hablo Espanol muy poquito. You know, like. (laughs) <laughs> and like Tush, like I'm telling you, I don't know any Spanish, yo. I know nothing, bro. But I was like, oh, you want to talk Spanish? Okay, I, I know what you're saying. And I was like, just to let you know, you went through a stop sign. So if you want to wait for the cops, I got no problem, man. Because you're at fault here. I'm mm-hmm. not at fault. Yo, his eyes lit up. And he was like, you know what? I don't even have insurance, man. Just get on your way. And I was so happy. You're right. No I was way. So happy, man. I, I felt bad. I did. I felt bad because I hit him, but he definitely went through a stop sign. And uh, and to make a long story short, he went on his way. I went on my way. Nobody was hurt, and I made it to the airport. You're li- I I'm sorry, bro. Oh, this <laughs> you really said. I right, yo, listen. I know a little Spanish. No, he said, that. "I caught you going through the stop yeah. sign." Listen, yo, bro. I didn't even say that. Listen. I didn't even say that part in Spanish. But he was like, he was saying something to her. She was saying something to him. Like, yo, this is this guy's fault. You can't take chances, man. You can't yep. take chances. And I was like, yo, oh, hablo español, muy poquito, muy poquito español, uh, whatever I said. I was like, I speak a little Spanish. So what you want to do? And then he was like, yeah, I don't have a turn. Just, just go on your way. And I was like, oh man, thank you. But anyway, so that, that was that, it even was it like a bad dent in the car? On his car, nothing with my my friend's avalanche has one of those one of those uh, roll bars in the front. Man, he yes. had a little dent. My friend's like, don't even worry about it. 
And I was already having a oh, bad yeah, day, man. The Giants lost. Breeze outplayed Manning. It was the worst. Listen, man. That that's another thing too. Why he? That's crazy that you. That's luck. Yes. I ain't even gonna call yes. it anything else. I agree with that you. That is luck without a doubt. You could have been. You could have missed your flight. There could have been a big holdup for no 100%. reason. You know, police, all that. 100%. Like that's just that luck. thing. That thing with the accident would have should have taken over an hour just to figure out what what happened. Exactly. Yo, listen, man. At least you notice. Know if you're down in New Orleans, guys. Just know a little bit of Spanish. Yes, You'll be fine. Yes. And actually, anywhere you go, man. Anywhere you go. I got to start, start Any, learning. Uh, and that game was Odell's homecoming, too. It was, yeah, because he's an LSU yeah. boy. Yeah, man. Man, Odell, listen, we could probably get into him later because, I don't know, we'll, we'll probably get into him later and just wide receiver divas in general. But that's uh, that might be another topic. So... On that game, though, right? Let's uh, let's pretend the accident didn't happen. Let's say you had some extra time. What would have been your reaction if you would have stayed and you know just soaked it all in? That oh my god, we just got like a what was it, like forty eight to fifty two yeah, or something. Guys, you know, Breeze really outplayed them. Like it was, I wouldn't even call it outplay because they both they were both great in that yes. game. But like Saints just came out yes, on top. No, no defense wanted to win that game. I, I mean, I don't know that I'm not really. Maybe when I was back in college or a little bit after college, like you guys hang around after the game and maybe have a few or maybe go, you know, around the, the Giants team boss and be like, yo, good looks to so maybe a player comes out, daps up a little bit. But I, man, I got to get to work, man. I don't care. I don't, I'm not hanging around nowhere. When that game ends, you know, nowadays I take some pics with some fans, which is pretty cool. I'm honored that anybody even asked me. I'm honored that people ask me to sign some stuff here and there. But other than that, I'm gone. I'm ghost. I want to I mm-hmm. get to the airport. I want to get on a plane. I want to get home. I understand you there, man. Definitely. As you get older, you know, your priorities get a little bit straighter, yep. a little more yep. sorted out. And like you said, you are traveling back and forth every game. So that takes a lot of time. It as does, well. man. It does. So, it's like another job, bro. Exactly. And this is this is kind of a random question, right? But so like do you take do you go to your hotel first and then go to the airport? Or do you like have your stuff in the car in the parking lot with you? Oh, that's a great question again. So, so so when I go to a game, I always go on Friday night or Saturday, even though I'm there mad early. I don't want anything to prevent mm-hmm. me from flying out. So I normally get to games on a Saturday. And remind me, I'll tell you a great story about the Minnesota when the dome collapsed. I was in Minnesota. The Giants weren't in Minnesota. I was in Minnesota. But uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, so I normally get there. I get a hotel for Friday night. And that's rare. I normally go on Saturday. I get a hotel for Saturday night. But once Sunday comes, I pack up either my friend's car, my rent a car, and then I take it to the game and either park, you know, in a lot or somewhere a little bit, you know, off site. And then I run to the car after the game return it at the airport and then i'm already uh, i'm there i'm ready to rock and roll all right that's that's a pretty good strategy yeah like you could just leave immediately and why not you know why not go ahead and tell the minnesota game story right now yeah why not you yeah. brought it up again i don't tell this story a lot but so i'm trying to get to the game and all new york airports are no no new york airports are flying but i can't get to minnesota and this is i believe mm-hmm. I think it's Friday night, Friday. I'm trying to get to Minnesota. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. And I remember the last flight out of LaGuardia to Duluth, Minnesota. I know it so well, Duluth. And I'm looking on a map and I'm like, where, I'm like, how the Where is Duluth exactly. even in relation so to I'm like? I'm looking on a map and I'm like, Duluth, Duluth. And I'm like, oh, shoot, that's close. That's maybe a, a, a an hour and a half, two hour car ride, something like that. I'm like, I could do that. I could do that. All right. Mm-hmm. So let's go to Duluth. So I land in Duluth. I swear to you, it's like, I don't know, eight, nine o'clock at night. And I rent a car and I'm driving from Duluth to Minnesota. And I'm driving, I'm driving. And sure enough, here comes the storm that they predicted. And when I tell you, that it was white out dude you think new york snow is bad it was it was unreal 
So a two the Arctic Circle came it, down. You upon have no you. idea. It was so bad, like there weren't even any like you know on the side of a highway you could see mile markers and this nothing. Nothing. So when you when I tell you, you But the the question to me, the question for me to you, right, is were you even on a highway, right? Because the loot sounds like no, a small was a, town. Was it, it like yeah. a one? It was road? A, it was a major highway, but 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 I'm talking okay. about trucks and cars on the side. No one's really moving. But I gotta get I gotta mm-hmm. I gotta get to Minnesota. I gotta get there. Anyway, I make it to Minnesota. I would say a two hour car ride turned into a six hour car ride. And I make it Jeez I make Christ. it to to Minnesota. I check into the Giants team hotel. And I I remember I forgot what time I woke up, but I turned on Sports Center and sure enough, the dome had collapsed. So so I already knew that I was in trouble. It's not like the game was gonna was gonna be played. The Giants are stuck in Kansas City. They didn't make it to Minnesota. Mm-hmm. I'm in the Giants team hotel in Minnesota. They're not there. And then the NFL is trying to figure out what's gonna happen. And that's the game that took place in Detroit. So I got from yeah. I had to pay a crazy amount of money to return the car to Minnesota. Because, you know, if you don't return it to the place you got it, you're in trouble. I return it to Minnesota. Mm-hmm. I think I slept in the airport with a million other people that were stranded trying to get out. I couldn't get out on Sunday. Thank God, because they moved it to Detroit on Monday. I flew to Detroit and mm-hmm. I made it for the game. And that was crazy. So did you did you end up taking a day off then, or were you like was Monday That's working a, out for you? Know what? You? I don't. I, I would be lying to you if I told you what the hell I did on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. <laughs> All I know is I was in Detroit. There's a picture of me and Brandon Jacobs on the field before the game because that's my dude. We're on the field before the game. Yeah. There's no one there yet. It was surreal. It was crazy. It was crazy to play that game in Minnesota uh, in Detroit. What what was the, what was the audience like? The crowd was there a lot of people there or did uh, was it that sparse? Was, that's crazy too because no 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 they they sold tickets they honored tickets if you had it but they also sold tickets to anybody in Detroit. The the weird part about mm-hmm. that was I can't I can't fully remember how it went but I know it was like first come first serve so like I have front row t- seats but if my butt wasn't down there in time. You didn't sit there. I can't. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Did they honor it, man? I forgot how they honored it, but it was it was tough, man. It was the NFL did a great job to even get that game going. You, you think they did a great job? I was going to ask, like, how you feel about you know? On the one hand, I can see why they do the first come first serve. On the other hand, I can see if a fan you know gets upset, like you know, I did pay for my seat down there. You think the NFL did uh, handle it well? Honestly, bro. They handle this stuff like professionals. Look what they're doing with the draft. They're still going to have it. They're going to do. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's going to come off a little wild, but and a little weird. But they're going to pull it off, and everything's going to be just fine. And great point bringing up the draft because that's where we're going next. Now, when we're talking about that Breeze uh, Manning game, nobody wants to win. Uh, no defense wants to win the game. I should say, completely correct. The Giants right now. I don't even know if you could call it a defense with what we have. Granted, we haven't seen the free agents that we got play on the field yet. I think they did an all right job, but where do you think they would go? And then where do you think they should go? Two different questions in the draft. All right, well, let's start off with uh, your first point with free agency. You know, listen, I, I wanted I wanted everybody fired. I wanted to, I wanted to get them. I wanted everybody gone. I wanted to scrub the floors mm-hmm. in the locker room. I wanted new ball boys. I wanted everything scrubbed. But you know, you gotta give you gotta give Gettleman some some credit, man. You know, he did a good job in free agency. He really did because you know the first thing you gotta do is take care of your own. And if you lose your own, you gotta replace those guys. So even though you want to run out and get a clowny or you want to get a Yannick, or you, you know, you want to get all these guys, you've got to replace what you lost. So, so you lose an Ogle tree, you replace with a Martinez. And then you got to say to yourself, Kush, is he better? Is he the same? Is he worse? 
those are the those are the things you got to really work out in your own head. I'm going to say that Gettleman had a solid B. I really do. I think he did a good job at free agency. Yes, I wanted Clowney. Yes, I wanted a trade for Yannick. Yes, I wanted uh, um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, whatever. I wanted all of these guys. Middleton? You know, like every, yeah, everybody okay, okay. else wants. But but you really have to look at your your cap space, and you got to figure out whether you're doing the right thing or not. So. I'm giving him a B for free agency. Yeah, I did. I gave him a B. Everybody, you know, the, the haters on Gettleman are going to give him a, a D. You know, I'm the people that hate F, Which I think is just way out of the question. So, I mean, look, there are haters out there. You know, people that hate Blake Martinez are going to, you know, they're going to give him a D. People that think he's okay are going to give him a C. And then there are people out there that are going to be like, okay, he got rid of this guy and got the same guy. So I'm still giving him a D. But I think of, he did a decent job. So, and of course, there are people out there. While there's Gettleman haters, there's definitely people out there. I guess Gettleman stands that will give him an A no matter what. No, I don't. I don't know. I, real talk. I don't know many of the A's, but mm-hmm. but, they, yeah, but 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 there are some out there. Look, I, I nailed a couple of free agents. I believe you know. Even though I wanted Van Noy, I knew that I, I I was tweeting very heavily that I knew that the Giants were hot and heavy for Blake Martinez. They did wind up getting him. And not Benoit, so I knew that was going to happen. And a couple of others, I knew what was going to happen with, uh, uh, but I think everybody else did with Leonard Williams. I thought Rosas, uh, I think he's going to have a bounce back here. I think we paid him a lot of money, but I think he's a really good kicker. I really do. Um, on the so- Rosas thing, if you don't mind me speaking on that real quick, uh, the reason I think he's going to have a bounce back here is because Zach Diassi has a long snapper last year, was terrible. You know, I don't want to sugarcoat it. He had really bad snaps throughout the entire year. And when we replaced him with Tabor Pepper in the last three games, Rosas didn't miss a kick. And then we just yeah, signed a new long snapper. You know what? You know what? You're you're a knowledgeable fan because because first of all, there's no one better than than Diasi out there, but he definitely was injured. Um mm-hmm. and it showed. Um so so you know what? Look at the uh, who the Giants pick up uh to snap this year. I forgot. Um, Kelsey, uh, KC Crater from the Broncos, a Pro Bowl long snapper. Yeah, and let me tell you something. I gave that such a high praise because you don't know how important that is until you have a bad snap. So, mm-hmm. so you're right. So, I think Rosas is going to have a, a bounce back year. So, so I think Gettleman did a decent job with that. So, let's fast forward to this draft. Um, I got to tell you, man, sitting at four, there's there's only X amount of options, and here they are. You run up to the podium if Chase Young is there. I'm talking about you run up. You, he is, I remember X amount of months back, he was the only guy in the draft. You mm-hmm. know, there was nobody else in the draft but Chase Young. So if he's there, you run up there, you don't look back, and that's it. You got so the now, bell on speed dial. Yep. So now Chase Young is gone to the Redskins, and now I hate him forever. And now you're sitting at four, and there are low. There are three options, four options really. I'm not. I don't want to talk about the Okuda, uh, Derek, uh, the Brown, the tackle. I don't want to talk about those options because I consider those surprise options. Are they there? Yes, but I'm going to include all of those in a surprise. So you, your real options are trading, Simmons, and an offensive tackle. So let's talk about all that. Mm-hmm. If you want Simmons and he's there, you pick him up. He could play all three linebacker positions. He can guard the tight end. He's a beast. He's going to be, his game will will be very uh, well adapted in the NFL, and I would clap and be very happy. However, he's not my first choice. Okay. Uh, I right. agree with you there. He's not my first choice either. Well, our first choice is Chase Young, but he's not my second choice either. My second choice is trading. The Giants are in need of multiple positions. And if they could get multiple positions back, and still stay in the top 10, I believe a trade is in store. However, I love all these Twitter and and IG and Facebook and social media 
armchair quarterbacks, these, these, these guys that think they, they know better than the GM. The, <laughs> you, need a, you need another team to do that. You can't exactly. be like, okay, we're trading. Oh yeah, I'm so, who? I'm so happy you brought this up because literally yesterday, I believe I put out a tweet. I'm like, guys, it takes two people to dance. The Giants can't just go to a random team say, hey, yo, you want to you want to give me like yeah. your first, your second? I'll give you this uh, fourth overall, and yes. bam, it happens. No, and I said yeah. the same thing for the people that were complaining about. Oh my God, they didn't even try to get Corey Littleton. It's like how you know that guy wants to come here. It takes it takes two, bro. It takes two in free agency. It takes two with an agent. It takes two with a team to trade. It takes two. That's all there is to it. So, so I do want the I do want the trade. I want the trade over Simmons. That's not saying mm-hmm. I wouldn't be happy with Simmons. I just want the trade over Simmons. So. So let's say trade is off the table. And now it's between Simmons and an offensive tackle. Uh, I got to tell you, man, I'm so torn. I am sick and tired of talking about the offensive line. (laughs) Just just go and get one of these guys already and not look back. Okay, you're going to get a player that's going to be your offensive tackle for the next 10 years. Let's hope. So let's say let's say it's an offensive tackle. I personally want Wills. I do. I want Wills. I'll take Wirfs and I'll take Thomas and then I'll take Becton. I think I, Becton, I, I will say I'm sorry. I'm not taking Becton. I do not believe in Becton. No, no, no. Hey, look, I'm on the same page as you. I Becton mm-hmm. is my last guy only because I think he's a year away. I think he is too big if there is such a thing. Um, and I'm scared of injury when you're that big. Uh, I think Wills has tremendous footwork, and he's strong. I think Wirfs is uh, good. I think Thomas is good, and that's where I stand on that. So if the Giants went ahead and took an offensive tackle at four, it's not the sexy pick. I wouldn't be jumping up and down. I'd be like, okay, good. We got an offensive tackle. Let me turn this crap off now. So, so. You know, I'll be happy with Simmons. I'll be happy with an offensive tackle. And then I'll be surprised with the surprise guys that I told you about. All right. I will say this. I like your rankings of them. I agree with you. At fourth, um, I, I, I personally, I would be, you know, I wouldn't be ecstatic because like you said, it's not exactly a, a sexy pick, but everybody knows it's probably, it's, it's the most sense, in my opinion, is the most sensible pick. Just because, like you said, we've been talking about the offensive line for God knows how long. And um, part of me is a little annoyed that fans forget we've been talking about the offensive line for how long. Yep. But I can see where they're coming from when they're like, yo, Simmons is a cam, this guy. I can see part of that. But the larger part of me is like, yo, you can't just forget about the fact that this offensive line is it's bad. It's like it's it's kind of it's weird. It's a contradiction because we got two really good guards. And we have a tackle that could be good if he played up to it. God knows Solder had a surgery last year. He was still coming off his injury. And there, there's the personal thing with his, you know, his kid having cancer. So who knows how that affected him last year? Yeah, true. So and we have know, a tackle. Don't, don't sleep on Nick Gates. And don't sleep mm-hmm. on and don't sleep on Spencer Pulley at center. I don't want, you know, I I I, I they're both good, but obviously I'd want you know, a a first rounder at the tackle. And I'd certainly want that, uh, the Ruiz guy at center, but, but here we are again, talking about the same crap we've been talking about for years. Mm -hmm. So you're right. Yeah. I I agree with you there, especially on the center part recently, as you know, as the time is going on, now that everybody's home more and everybody's stir crazy. So things change even faster than usually. Uh, re- recently, the hot fat has been, you know, take a center along with a tackle or take a center along with Simmons, which I can see taking a center along with Simmons. But if we take a tackle, I don't see it necessary to go center, you know, earlier in the draft, maybe later down the line for a depth piece. But I agree with you. Pulley and Gates, let's see what they got. Yeah, because Pulley is better than Jalapio, in my opinion. I don't know why we started Jalapio over Pulley last year. I think he has more. Uh, Spencer has more experience and he played better for us in 2018 when John was injured. And then yep. for Gates, they're saying a lot of great things about him. And the last time the Giants said similar things about a player where they're like, we believe in him. You guys will see what we see in training camp. 
it was about Alder Rosas. And yeah. well, we got the great year from Alder Rosas in 2018. Yeah. So I agree with you there. While the offensive line is bad, it's at the same time, it's not that far off. I think if we get a tackle, next year will be a good offensive line because it will be more of a sum of the parts thing rather than we have all stars everywhere. It would be more sum of the parts. And yeah, then we could. If, if your prediction is right and the Giants stay away from a center uh, until the later rounds, then you'll have Nick Gates and Pulley competing for the center position if the Giants mm-hmm. go OT. Yeah, that's that's what I think is going to happen if we go OT. That could. And to be honest with you, I really do think if we take a tackle, right, because of, you know, I think Solder is going to have a better year this year because, like I said, you know what I'm saying? Better. Mentally, he wasn't there. Mentally, he wasn't there and coming off the surgery. I expect him to have a better year. And if he doesn't, obviously, he's going to be off the team. But let's say he does. Yep. That affects how he plays next to Hernandez, who will also have a better year, and who, because of Solder's play last year, decreased. Which would then, you know, it's, it's like it's, it's just a machine. You know, it's a cog. They have to work together to be better. And so I think Solder works better, the offensive line on the left side works better, and then we'll have a new right tackle, which will help out our right guard and Kevin Zeitler, who people forget is one of the better right guards in the league. Totally agree. And I think the offensive line will be good. I don't want to, you know, be one of the fans that say, oh, we're going to be great A+, plus, but I think it's going to be good. I, I, I'm, I'm on board. Right? So that's my take on the O-line. For defense, I agree with you. I love Simmons. I do think he's one of the better players in the class. Um, He's probably like, defensively probably my third best player because i think people undervalue how good okuda and brown are that's just me they're so good they're, they are extremely good and simmons has that versatility for him but who knows how we're gonna use him i would hope we use him a similar way that clemson did but if we don't it's you know he's not gonna be the same player that he was in college it all depends how this defense uses him the thing is with simmons though is that our defense has a lot more holes than the offensive line does oh yes as bet as bad as our offensive line is, our defense is worse. You want to take it from there? Well, you you said a mouthful. Giants are going to need several players on the defensive side. Several. Um, if the Giants wound up to take Okuda, they literally would have a lockdown. You know that, right? Yeah. I mean, they would have a lockdown corner. However, man passing up all the players to go with a cornerback. I just, that's the surprise that I was talking about before the giants have to add a safety. Who's playing safety, by the way. Uh, as of right now, the only safety we got for sure is to build peppers at strong safety. We have no idea what's happening with free safety. Well, don't forget Junior the- love might be moving in the slot. Alright guys, thanks for watching, put your comments down below, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer.